Hello everybody, this is Paul Beard with Beard Guitars. Today I got in Terry Douglas's black beard and um, apparently it uh, sustained some damage uh, as it fell out of the back of a vehicle that he was traveling in. And he sent it in for, uh, for me to repair it and you can see here that Jerry has put some um, uh, gaffers tape on here to get through the gig that he was playing. And I uh, just want to pull this off to see what we have. Okay, as you can see right here, there's a crack that starts right at the neck block and I'm going to assume it goes all the way over here. So I'm going to take this apart today and assess the damage, see how we're going to repair it, get it back to him. This is Blackie and I'd like to do a little series on how we repair Blackie in the next uh, couple of days. Okay, I have Jerry's Blackie on the workbench. I've got all of the tape off of the cracked area. And here's a little spot that I found that as a result of some road rash, took the corner right off of the peg head there. But the more important portion of this fix is this crack. And this crack does go from the neck block all the way over here to about the nine o'clock position on the cover plate. And right here, this is good news. I can press this with my hands together. You can see the crack coming together. And right here, you can see it's almost a double crack. And so I'll be able to squeeze some glue in there and, and get a good joint right there. The next thing I'm gonna do though is take the guitar completely apart. So I've loosened the strings and I'm gonna start uh, disassembling the guitar. Okay, I've taken the guitar apart. I have the uh, bass baffle removed from the guitar and the spider with the pickup off of the cone. And I'm looking at this cone and I'm actually shocked because it's in great condition. I fully expected this cone to be damaged from the, the hard knock that it took in the, in the uh, fall. But uh, this cone appears to be uh, fine. I'm going to replace it anyway, but uh, it's just interesting that it made it through. So now I'm going to take a look at the inside of the crack. Alright, I have the inspection mirror placed so that I can see the crack and I've turned the um, flashlight feature on my phone so that there you can just see the light coming through. That crack is right up against the kerfing. Okay, I'm finishing up removing the hardware. I'm going to remove the Lawler silver foil magnetic pickup and the screens. And now I have a good view of the upper bout here. I'd like to point out that this lining is called kerfing, and kerfing is um, what combines the back to the side, or what connects the back to the side, and also the top to the side. So this lining, or kerfing, is glued in to make a good connection for the side to the back or, or to the top. You'll also notice that right here I have these braces that are spaced about every four or five inches apart on the side. And the function of these braces is to stop any uh, potential damage in the form of a crack from uh, continuing. Uh, so basically these are running across the grain, they're perpendicular to the grain, and if a crack develops here, it will hopefully stop here. Now we can see where that actually applied in this instance. Okay, first of all, this is just tape residue. I want to point that out. That's not a crack. Here's our main crack. And here's a piece of kerfing. And this is where the kerfing would be located on the inside of the guitar. And right here you can see that the crack came down and stopped right there. And then it picked up again up here and continued. The reason it stopped there is because one of those braces that's perpendicular to the grain is placed right here. So it did its job. It, uh, the damage could have been a lot worse had that little brace not been there. All right, I'm ready to glue the crack uh, on Blackie. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, spread the crack open just a little bit so that I can clear out any debris that might be in there that would prevent it from going back together completely. And in order to do that, I'm going to use this little jack made out of a small turnbuckle. And I'm gonna place that in the guitar and, and put pressure on the top and the back to spread this crack open. So I'll flip the guitar over. And I'm going to place the turnbuckle right here 
and uh, you'll see I'm going to put it right on top of this back brace and that's important because I want the added strength of that back brace uh, so that it doesn't cause any damage to the back as I put the pressure on this little jack. I'm just going to turn this a little bit, a little bit of pressure, take a look at the crack and there you can see the crack has opened up a lot. That's great because I can clean it out and I can get lots of glue in there. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on cleaning out the crack and we're going to look at that very closely. I have a little needle here that I can, I can look in here and inspect it. This looks very clean, but right here I see a hunk of wood. So I'm going to take my, my needle and see if that's something I can pull out. Yep, that's loose. So we want to get that out of there so that that doesn't prevent the crack from going shut. Okay, I've removed the turnbuckle to close the crack back up because I want to dry fit uh, the clamps to make sure there isn't going to be any uh, surprises when we clamp this up. So these are very uh, delicate clamps. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure because the sides are only 95 thousandths thick. So just a tiny bit of pressure is plenty to, to make the, uh, the bond for an adequate glue joint. Now I want to check that since this is uh, clamped up dry without glue, I want to check the seam here to make sure it's flush. And this looks really good. Okay, so right here, a little bit of a problem area. Um, this, is, this is very flush until I get here and I can feel a definite ridge. So that means that the, the sides are kind of um, on an angle with each other and they're, they're not lining up. So I'm gonna have to come up with a different way to clamp this so that they're flat on the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue this area where it's nice and flush and then I'll deal with this area separately. So we'll take the clamps off. I'm going to put the turnbuckle back inside, spread it apart, and glue this front valve. I'm going to take a wet paper towel and wipe off all the excess glue.
Okay, I glued blackie up last night in the upper bout, and this turned out to be nice and flush. But if you recall, right here we had a problem where the side is sticking out further than the, uh, the top of the guitar. So I'm going to make some clamping calls so that I can clamp this and pull this into the correct shape. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is trace the outside of the guitar body on a clamping call and cut it to shape. Okay, I've made all the clamping calls to glue this crack in, in this location, and I have it indexed here uh, so I know where to place the call. I'm, I'm going to index it right against the insert where the cover plate screw goes, and these marks indicate where I'm putting my uh, clamps, and some C clamps are up here, so I'm ready to put the uh, glue in the crack and, and glue it up. Of course, I'm going to put the uh, turnbuckle inside to spread it open a little bit. Everybody loves the turnbuckle. All right, we're ready to glue, so I'll take the turnbuckle out. And now I'm indexing the coals. So they're right in the location that I had when I did the dry fit. I also put some paraffin wax on my calls to prevent them from being glued to the side of the guitar. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is put a clamp to squeeze the crack together from top to bottom. And I'm going to check for the fit and it's perfectly flush in here and I've got good squeeze out. So that's it. Blackie is officially glued up. 
Blackie's back on the workbench. It's been uh, completely glued up. I've taken care of all the cracks so it's structurally sound. So now it's time to take care of some cosmetic details. I'm going to start up here on the peg head. It took a hard knock here on the corner. So the first thing I want to do is kind of chip away at any finish that is uh, broken and loose. And since this took a hard impact, this is kind of crushed. So I'm hoping that I can steam that out with a little bit of water and some heat and we can raise that grain and uh, uh, not lose um, um, any of its integrity there. Try to, try to make it pop out. Use a soldering iron to do so. And there you can see it's actually moved the fibers of the wood and I've gained a little real estate there, so I don't have to fill that with anything. So we're going to work on the rest of the guitar on some other small cosmetic areas where it uh, hit the, the surface of the road and then on to finishing. <laughs> 